a Civ that everyone really wanted to have updated, but disappointingly, not exactly like this. Today we're going to talk about Herald of Norway in both his Konga and Varingian forms. I'll go over the abilities of both the Civs and the Leaders, and give a score for each victory type, as well as a final overall score for Herald at the end. If you like this video, please give me a like, or even subscribe. I just got to the point that I'm able to set up channel members, which is a huge milestone for me, and I was only able to get here thanks to all of your help. I appreciate it greatly, and I hope that the value you get out of my videos is worth the time and effort that I'm putting into them. Harold has never felt like the best Civ in the game, but he does feel unique, and we all wanted an update to Norway, some sort of a buff, but I think we really didn't pay attention to how much of Norway's flavor and appeal was tied to the leader ability, Thunderbolt of the North. With this ability you get 50% naval melee unit production. You also get the Viking Longship, which is a naval melee unit with sailing attack. You most importantly get the ability to coastally raid with naval melee units. Coastal raiding gives you science, gold, faith, or culture depending on what tile you're raiding. And this does stack with the raiding military policies. And while being very flavorful, I find that this bonus doesn't really add up to very much in a majority of games. Unless you're playing on a very heavy water map, most cities are going to be inland, near mountains, and stuff like that, and even the deity AI struggled to get city improvements down early enough in the game for this to help snowball you to the win. They usually start improving things much later in the game, and I find that as soon as I get Viking longships, I'm pretty often waiting turn after turn after turn for a coastal AI to just improve those stupid tiles. And once I pillage the tiles once, it takes ages for them to repair the tiles for me to get multiple dips out of my pillaging. <sighs> when it lines up, this feels really great. But it doesn't line up very often, and it doesn't happen early enough for me to feel like it wins my games very often. Varingian Herald is also very different. You lose all of these bonuses because Thunderbolt to the North it might be the most heavily weighted leader ability in the game. But in response, what you get is cheaper levied units and you get gold, faith, culture, and science for killing units with those levied units instead of raiding. So one leader is incentivizing you to raid and have more of a pillagey destructive sort of war, and the other leader is incentivizing you to kill, but only with certain units. And I think everyone was super excited for this, and I don't think we all thought about what we were losing. Everyone thing that we think of for Norway, the longship, the naval production, the coastal raids, all of that is tied to, tied to Thunderbolt of the North. And this bonus, in my opinion, is more consistent over time, but it feels much worse because one, you're getting less gold, science, faith, and... Uh, culture, but also when you start winning wars with the AI, you're going to find that they run out of units extremely quickly. How often have you been in the situation where you start a war with a Civ that has over 1k military strength in the medieval era, and suddenly they drop down to 100 military strength? This is not including the fact that it's not all of your units, it's only a fraction of your units that are getting this bonus, just the levied ones. You also might not be the suzerain of any nearby city-states. This feels a lot worse than Hungary and is only useful for a little bit of time. One, because unlike Hungary, you don't get the envoys. And two, unlike Hungary, you aren't better at fighting or cheaper to upgrade with levied units. I feel you have to be opportunistic here, and you have to hope that Amani helps you get those suzerains early enough that they really come into play. Norway the Civ gets the ability to embark without any movement penalties and enter the ocean earlier at shipbuilding, as well as naval units healing in neutral territory, and all of these things are pretty small bonuses that really don't warp the game in any specific way. It kind of just helps you exploring and killing those barbarian naval units. It's easier to heal after taking out barb galleys. You also get the Berserker, which is a better man-at-arms, and you get extra movement points in enemy territory, which is good because the man-at-arms is a very good unit, but it doesn't feed into the flavor with either Herald. You're not coastal raiding with them, and you're not levying them. It's just a unit that you use to come in and take cities after you have wasted all of your time just sort of killing units and burning down uh, 
improvement over time with uh, your other units. Finally, and very weirdly, you get a bonus that doesn't have anything to do with war. It's the Stave Church. Well, it has a little bit going for it. It gives your holy sites plus one faith per adjacent wood tile, and that's great because you can really get up to plus five, I think, or plus six uh, whole, uh, faith adjacent to these things. This was uh, pre-Theodora holy site uh, adjacency bonuses, and we all think Theodora is really good. And you also get plus one production for sea resources, which is also very good because you're going to be building a lot of naval cities since you want to be, especially as Konga Herald, you really want to be navally producing things. If you can get a religion and you can get work ethic, you're going to be producing naval units or your berserkers extremely quickly, which helps with Konga Herald. And you can also produce gold buildings and encampments very quickly and the Diplo Quarter very quickly and your, your government plaza pretty quickly, which helps with Varingian Herald to get those governor titles for Amani and for the envoys per turn. Norway is not my favorite Civ by any measure. I find that I'm often playing an ability-less game until the AI starts playing well and improving tiles. If I have weak AIs like Monty or somebody in my game, I really struggle. Whereas if I'm playing against stronger AIs, someone like the Congo, I usually do a little better, but the Congo never really settles very coastally. Stuff like that really starts to affect my game. I kind of just play a standard faith into a Grandmaster's Chapel game, which is an easy game to play, and they're fun going on faith domination ramps, but it doesn't really feel like a Viking game. I don't feel the flavor very strongly, uh, even though the sieve is designed to be super flavorful, it's just the, the bonuses that it gets doesn't impact the game very much. As Konga Herald, I always get an early longship to go explore. And I'll declare on the sieve that's farthest away from me and start raiding. If I'm Varingian Herald, I do the same, but instead of raiding, I have to wait even longer because I have to plop down a money in a nearby good city state site and have to save up my gold, even though it's cheaper, to levy those units and start hunting their units down. The goal with both of these is to not win a war, it's to slingshot myself a little bit ahead of my nearest weakest neighbor and use my berserkers to take them out. After I can take out one neighbor, the game really opens up. But that's a pretty common gameplay style, so what makes Norway super unique? You get gold, faith, science, and culture, but the situations in which you get these gold, faith, science, and culture is limited, essentially, by the AI of the game. Domination is usually the best choice for both heralds. Everything that you have is geared towards burning other sieves down. So 10 out of 10. You can win a domination game and it's not super hard, but you're not going to feel that incentivized to play this game. I think I enjoy Konga Herald the most though, so I suggest playing him. Religion is your next best option, and you get a surprising amount of faith from your holy sites, and the production to build more settlers to get more holy sites, and build builders to build woods on your holy sites. But by the time you can plant woods, it's incredibly late into the game, you've probably already won. You also get no advantages towards getting a great profit, except for maybe some early kills or pillages allowing you to buy one with faith, or pillaging uh, coastal holy sites, you're incentivized to pillage coastal holy sites to slow an AI down from getting one. So 6 out of 10. Everything else in my opinion is possible, just not fun and not worth going for. If you're going to wipe out half the map and be incentivized to go to war all the time, why go for a science, culture, or diplo win? Just finish your domination win. So they all get 3 out of 10. Harold is one of the sieves that I'm least excited to see when I roll a random sieve. He isn't terrible, but he also isn't terribly fun. The dice have to roll exactly the way you want them to have a good Herald game. You need the AI to do well, and often they don't. I think civs who rely too heavily on the AI for their own bonuses really are against the spirit of this game. You want to snowball ahead. You don't want to wait to leech the whole game and catch up. You have spies to do that for you. You want to be setting yourself up in a position to snowball at the beginning of the game, and Herald just doesn't do that. Konga Herald gets a B from me, while Varingian Herald gets a C. And this is just serious bias on my own part. I enjoy the playstyle of pillaging and raiding the most, and if I want to play a city-state heavy game where I go on a domination spree, I'm just going to load up hungry and have a much better game. Thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
Goodbye.